Video games are for everyone. Whether you be a man or woman, young or old, there are fewer barriers to entry into our favourite hobby than ever before. And with the innovation of special controllers and visual options for those with extra needs, video games are truly open to everyone, even those who might struggle to play them at their default settings. Predating all that, though, of course, are difficulty options. They've been commonplace in video games for decades now, allowing players to adjust things like how tough their enemies are and the scarcity of health pickups. They're intended to allow players to enjoy a game in the way that's most comfortable for them, but that doesn't mean they're not also used as fodder for a good bit of ribbing. While some of these examples may come from a smug sense of superiority, we like to think that most are just harmless joking from someone laughing with you, not at you. And remember, no matter what the games may say, whatever difficulty you choose to play on is completely valid in our books. And the main reason I'm saying that is because I usually play on story mode these days. I'm just so busy and I don't have time for game overs anymore. Anyway, I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and here are 10 games that make fun of you for playing on easy. Number 10. Wolfenstein The New Order With its intense gunplay action and mature themes, one may think that Wolfenstein isn't a game for babies, but you might be surprised by what the game itself has to say about that. Wolfenstein The New Order offers a number of different difficulty options, ranging from the manly and hardcore I Am Death Incarnate down to the wimpier Don't Hurt Me. And then of course there's the easiest difficulty setting, mockingly named Can I Play Daddy? Hmm. Fittingly accompanied by a picture of the main character BJ Blazkowicz wearing a baby bonnet and sucking on a dummy, it makes it clear that this mode is intended very much for the faint of heart. This is actually part of a long-running gag within games made by id Software. The classic Wolfenstein games all had similar jokes with their difficulty settings that inspired this callback in the newer entries. And the joke also found its way into other games of the era, such as Wolfenstein's sister franchise Doom and Heretic, another shooter made using the same engine. But honestly, I think we're missing the point here. If there was a baby out there who could beat Wolfenstein on any mode, I'd be more impressed with them than I would a grown adult completing it on the hardest mode. That would have to be one tough baby. Number 9. Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain in Metal Gear Solid, playing stealthily is the name of the game. I mean, really, tactical espionage action is literally the subtitle for the entire series. Going in guns blazing is always an option, but not a particularly good one, as you're liable to find yourself six feet under sooner rather than later. Should you get gunned down enough times in Metal Gear Solid 5, however, the game will offer to lend you a hand, or a wing, rather. If you choose to equip the chicken hat, you'll find yourself having a much easier experience. Your health will regenerate faster, ammo drops will be more plentiful, and if you're spotted, enemies are more likely to laugh at you than report you because, well, you're wearing a chicken hat. Should you somehow continue dying with the chicken hat on, the game will throw you another bone, chicken bone, and offer you the Lil Chick hat, which makes you essentially invisible to enemies even when you're right in front of them. The hats only last for a single mission, but you can toggle the chicken hat on whenever you want in the game's options with no penalty. Just remember though, wearing a chicken on your head is a very easy way to end up with egg on your face. Number 8. Ninja Gaiden Black Nobody ever said being a ninja is easy, but nobody ever said it would be this hard either. Since their inception, the Ninja Gaiden games have been infamous for their immense difficulty, sometimes due to the punishing level design and sometimes due to uh, technical oversights. Intentional or not, getting through a Ninja Gaiden game is going to be a true test of the player's skill, luck, and most of all, patience. 
Ninja Gaiden Black, however, has no patience for patience. Should the player die three times in a row on the lowest difficulty, the game will ask if they wish to abandon the way of the ninja. Saying yes will unlock the Ninja Dog difficulty, a setting that will make enemies weaker and the player stronger, as well as providing a better supply of items. You're not locked out of any rewards or content for playing the game this way, aside from having your cool ninja gauntlets replaced with ribbons, and in fact, it actually unlocks an extra special cutscene. Unfortunately, though, that cutscene simply consists of your in game companion standing over your unconscious body and chastising you for your failure at being a proper ninja. God, talk about kicking a man when he's down. Number 7. 50 Cent Blood on the Sand In 50 Cent Blood on the Sand, you play as the titular famous rapper on a quest through the war-torn Middle East to reclaim a diamond-encrusted human skull after it's stolen by terrorists. Boy, the early 2000s really were a different time, huh? Blood on the Sand was actually the sequel to an earlier game called 50 Cent Bulletproof, and was considered to be an overall improvement over its predecessor, receiving positive reviews for its gameplay and light-hearted tone. Despite this, though, Blood on the Sand still included a cheeky reference to the first game in its difficulty modes. The game offers three standard difficulties, easy, normal, and hard, and if you somehow manage to die and get a game over while playing on easy, you'll unlock an achievement called Not Bulletproof. While that in and of itself wouldn't be worth much more than an eye roll, what makes it truly scathing is the idea of it being visible to other players viewing your profile, making it a potentially very public badge of shame for those who earned this dubious distinction. The real kicker, though, was that on the Xbox, the achievement was worth a whopping zero points for your gamer score, so you really got nothing out of this deal. Number 6. Sid Meier's Civilization Video games test many of our abilities, like our reflexes or our sense of rhythm, but Sid Meier's Civilization series is unique because the games challenge our ability to do homework. Mwah. Civilization games challenge players with overseeing the development of their chosen culture as they pursue global supremacy through means both economic and military. Along the way, their performance is graded on several parameters like wealth and happiness. This all culminates at the end of the campaign where the player is ranked among real historical leaders based on how successful their own leadership was. For the high achievers, they may find themselves among luminaries like Julius Caesar. However, since difficulty is also factored into your final score, those playing on easy will find themselves ranked among the likes of Warren G. Harding. For those not intimately familiar with US history, which is most of us, but I did some reading beforehand so I'll tell you, Warren G. Harding is widely considered by historians to be one of, if not the worst president of the United States, only serving a single term marred by numerous controversies that ended prematurely with his untimely death. Honestly though, I'm not half as mad about the implication of being compared to Mr. Harding as I am about having to Google his name just to figure out that I was being insulted in the first place. Number 5. Monkey Island 2 – LeChuck's Revenge The Secret of Monkey Island was considered to be one of the finest entries in the point-and-click adventure genre. So when the sequel rolled around, expectations were high, and not just from returning fans, but from new players looking for their first experience. To cater to this potentially lucrative new audience, Monkey Island 2 LeChuck's Revenge included two distinct modes of play, the standard version of the game as the developers intended it, and Monkey Light made for those who were scared to play their first adventure game. Monkey Light is intended to provide an easier version of the same core experience by simplifying or outright removing several of the game's trickier puzzles. Given that Monkey Island 2 is notorious for having some of the most difficult puzzles of all time, this mode offers quite the breezy playthrough for anyone who doesn't want to work 
the old noggin too hard. Which is probably why the back of the box advertises Monkey Light as being intended for reviewers from video game magazines, a group notoriously made fun of for their perceived lack of skill at actually playing games. The joke seems to have gotten lost in translation, however, as said reviewers praised Monkey Island 2 for its light mode, making the game more approachable to new players. Well, as long as everyone's having fun, I suppose, that's what's most important. Hang on, now that print media is all but gone and it falls to people like me to do the game reviews, am I the new butt of this joke? Oh my god. Number 4. Twisted Metal 2 it's a fairly common tactic among games of a certain generation to limit a player's ability to progress or beat the game based on the difficulty they choose. Normally, this can be seen in games that limit the true ending or a bonus cutscene to those who can beat it on hard mode. Less frequently, though, games may cut off your progress entirely just before the end game and tell you to play it again on a higher difficulty to reach the finale. The developers of Twisted Metal 2 saw those paltry attempts to coax players into harder difficulties and must have said to themselves, we can go even further. The single player mode of Twisted Metal 2 consists of eight stages of vehicular carnage interspersed with a few boss battles. There are several difficulties available to play on, but as a word of advice, I wouldn't bother playing on easy. If you do, you'll be able to make it through the first four stages and a single boss before the game blocks you from proceeding, telling you there are no losers allowed and to pick a harder difficulty if you want to see the story's ending. Being funny is one thing, but that's just being rude. Number 3. Myth The Fallen Lords before they were revolutionising the first-person shooter genre with the Halo series, Bungie was revolutionising the real-time strategy genre with the Myth series. Beginning with its first instalment, Myth the Fallen Lords, the series made a splash with its graphics which were revolutionary for the time, its strong narrative, and its gloomy atmosphere, as well as its difficulty. Myth became notorious among gamers for its intense difficulty, with each chapter of the story throwing wave after wave of zombie enemies at you in a merciless onslaught, and beating the game on its highest difficulty was a true badge of honour. The difficulty was one of a few things that many reviewers noted as a negative of the game, saying it was too difficult even on the easiest setting. Bungie themselves, though, didn't seem to think so, as they made it clear exactly what they thought of anyone who chose to play the game on easy. The description of Myth's timid difficulty reads, You will grow tired blunting your weapons on a poorly led horde of mindless corpse men, and once you have reduced them to so much sausage filler, the sweet taste of success will turn to ash in your mouth. Harsh words, to say the least, but also words that make me not want to eat sausage for a while. Hmm. Number 2. Gunstar Superheroes the successor to the Mega Drive classic Gunstar Heroes, Gunstar Super Heroes perfectly captures the original's intense, pulse-pounding run-and-gun action gameplay. While your focus is mostly going to be on said running and gunning, there is a story that unfolds as you go. And what's that story about? Well, it depends. If you play the game on normal difficulty, it's a straightforward but nuanced tale of a battle against an empire. You get a bit of backstory from the characters you meet, and you get to understand the scope of the conflict you're taking part in. If you play on hard mode, though, the story becomes much darker and more fleshed out, full of twists and moral ambiguity. Of course, if you play on easy, you get none of that, and are instead treated to a straightforward caper with good guys and bad guys akin to something out of a Saturday morning cartoon. Gone are the nuance and subtlety, and in their place are cheesy one-liners and the barest hints of a deeper plot. It's an interesting approach to storytelling in gaming, and in some ways a good incentive to help players improve and try out every mode. However, withholding the full story from those not skilled enough to ever play on hard mode seems like a bit of a jerk move. Not so heroic now, are you, Gunstar heroes? And number 1. Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward 
Escape rooms have become a popular activity around the world, allowing groups of friends to experience the thrill of solving puzzles to escape a locked chamber just like in the movies. Of course, unlike in the movies, there's no threat of actually dying in an escape room if you fail. Unless, of course, you have one of those friends who takes competition a little too seriously. Teamwork is key, a lesson that some of the characters in Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward could stand to learn. The game throws players into a seemingly hopeless situation where they must solve a series of life-or-death puzzles to seek a means of escape from the mysterious facility in which they find themselves trapped. There are two difficulty settings offered, hard and easy, with the main difference being the amount of help the other characters in the game offer the player. In easy mode, they are quick to offer advice if the player seems to be struggling with a puzzle, but their tone quickly turns from helpful to abrasive and eventually becomes downright patronizing. While their words are hurtful, though, it lends an extra bit of levity to the experience that's missing from a hard mode playthrough. And besides, seeing as how this is literally a life or death situation, I think we should be forgiven if our nerves are a little too frazzled for puzzle solving. God, give me a break, guys.